Hello everyone, this is our fourth episode and uh, I'm going to make a little confession. Uh, I've talked about setting up a small uh, home workshop, which I have done and I can speak with some, uh, some background on that, but, but I've never had any formal training as a machinist. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to mislead my viewers into thinking that, uh, that they can learn a lot about machining methods from me. There's some excellent videos on YouTube and elsewhere uh, that uh, by, by people with a more, much better background in machining than, than, than I have. Uh, my claim to fame, if I can put it that way, is the fact that uh, I've had quite a bit of experience in machine design. I like to build things. And machining is, is the a necessary procedure in order to build things. So, uh, so I want to talk about a project today. I skip a lot of the uh, procedures, uh, but obviously as we go uh, along in pursuing the project, we're going to have to go through some procedures, which we'll do over a number of episodes. Um, by the way, uh, if you like the videos and past videos, and you want to uh, indicate that with a, with a thumbs up, or uh, if you like the episodes and look forward to future episodes, which are going to be more about the actual projects that I have in mind, uh, then give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, it, it's, it means a lot, and I know better what my viewers are looking for and what I can offer them. So uh, back to the my, the, uh, the projects. Uh, what the one that I have in mind? I have a number in mind, but the one we're going to do to start with is um, a concept I have for an improved uh, te television, as a flat screen or a a computer monitor uh, support mechanism that is uh, both sturdier and lighter and possibly lower cost than what's presently available on the market. Um, and the idea is really uh, an ad adaption of the scissor concept. And I have here uh, a very simple scissor mechanism. And what it really is is a, a towel rack or a clothes dryer rack that I bought at a hardware store for, for $29, I think it was. And I adapted it. In this case, I mounted it horizontally so that I can bring it out horizontally quite far, actually, further than I really need to, but you can see that, and it's quite sturdy. And I use it because it, it supports my tray for the tools that I need when I'm doing lathe work. I don't normally have to bring it out that far, but maybe that far. But you can see how the scissor mechanism is really quite simple and is very good in this direction, at, at the direction at right angles to the extension of the scissor. Now this particular mechanism, are really two sets of scissor arms, a left and a right, and they are, they are stiffened with cross members so that you don't get any of this kind of movement. This is fairly light, but you can deflect it a bit, but it's not meant to move that way. It's not meant to go up and down, obviously. It's only meant to go in and out. So what I want to do for the, uh, the television screen or, t or computer monitor uh, support, I want to take the two scissor sets with no cross members so they can go independently in and out. So I can bring them out uh, in unison or I can pivot them so I can bring the screen sideways and you can turn it this way, that way. Um, and it's a fairly light mechanism. We don't, the, the current uh, supports on the market are, are quite heavy. And I think the weight could be as low as half of what, what is available today. So that's the idea. Um, now, what's different is, of course, I have already made some scissor arms here. Um, that not just do they have to pivot this way, but they've got to turn. And they need a track, because the bottom piece needs to slide up and down slide up or if I put a small roller on there, it needs to roll up and down in the track. And they need to be able to move smoothly this way. So I'm going to have uh, half these half inch rods that will support the upper pivot and the lower one, it should go in there, 
There we go. It allows, supports the upper pivot, allows it to turn this way. And the lower one will follow with a small wheel on the end of the scissor arm. And, and can also is able to, to pivot around like that. Um, the, uh, the one condition that you need to keep in mind here is as the scissor mechanism extends, you get quite a bit of weight against the uh, quite a large force with the scissor arm on the bottom here, especially as this distance closes up, as it extends, this, this uh, approaches to the, to the top. Uh, so you need to support this rod along the, along the length. Otherwise, you get deflection, and uh, you get too much, too much deflection in the, uh, in the actual support. So I have decided to support the rod with some cold draw steel that I have here. These are uh, half by 5 8 cold rolled steel bars. And I'm going to machine a V groove in here. For, uh, so uh, 45 degree, well, 90 degree V groove in, in the middle of the, uh, the center of the uh, three quarter inch wide space. And to do that, uh, there's a number of ways. I can, I can tilt the milling head at 45 degrees. I, I, this, this one is, is tiltable in either direction. But the setup takes quite a while. And then to get it back to 90 degrees, uh, is, uh, is quite an involved procedure, and not easily done. It takes several hours to do that. So a much easier way, instead of moving the, the milling head, is to, is to support the uh, cold roll steel rod at 90 by 45 degrees using these V blocks. These are very accurate ground blocks and hold it very rigidly. And all they need to do is they need to be held down on the bed I can't do that today, but for the next episode, we'll actually do the machining, and we'll have the, we'll clamp this down on the bed and machine the the little the V groove to provide the support for the for the round track. Um, okay. Uh, in order to do that, we need to have one, one here's some, again back to machining procedures. We need to make sure that our head is at right angles, or the spindle of the milling head is at right angles to the bed. And since this machine was actually taken apart in order to move it into the basement here in my shop and, and had to be reassembled, uh, this setup, which was originally done in the factory, needs to be done again to make sure that we're at 90 degrees. I'm just going to pivot this light over here so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to move this head up so we can look underneath it. Hopefully you can see what's going on. I'm going to move this away from here. We'll get a dial indicator. indicator to the spindle and then check the indication uh, from one point to another uh, along the length of the bed uh, by turning the spindle 180, uh, yeah, 180 degrees and then see whatever di distance there is. I actually already did that setup but I'm just going to do it again to demonstrate it because that's a very common thing that you need to do even if you do uh, uh, not Want, if you do not want to disturb the factory setup, sooner or later you will have to check this again anyway. So it's a good thing to do. And, and it can save you a lot of time if you use the right methods. Um, so we need to mount the indicator into the spindle. I have a, a fly cutter in there right now, which I need to take out first. We'll do that. of ground uh, rod, the drill rod, in a 
in a uh, collet, but unfortunately I don't have the right size collet, which happens when you can't have everything. But I can hold it in a normal uh, Jacob's chuck. It's not quite as accurate, but it's still quite good. So I have to take this collet out. Put this one in. Now, that's, that's how we need to hold the dial indicator. Now we're going to bring that down to the bed, uh, get a reading on the dial, and then we will take this to see what, what uh, how square our spindle is to the bed. So we bring this down. Start with the dial indicator on this side, and it's facing away from us, so I've got to come around to look at it, which is fine, not a problem. There, I wouldn't take the reading there. I'll get a, I'll get a light that I have here. Sorry. Okay. Make it easier to read. And I'll set it at zero. You don't need to. I'll there, that's set at zero right now. And now let's see what we get when you swing it around. I don't need the light now. You don't want to run the indicator in the groove, so you lift them up and drop it down again there. And I have to put my glasses on. We're within, we're within two thou. Uh, that's not bad. If you can get that more accurate. You can get it within one thou, um, but um, it's not really necessary. Uh, although this is only over um, about a ten-inch distance, that means over the entire. This is roughly thirty-three inches with the, the bed. And you would have three times as much, so you would have a difference of from one end of the table to the other. It'd be a six thou difference. Uh, that is not going to hurt at all for most things that you do, even fairly accurate things that you do. One thing I need to explain: when the head is a bit off of the uh, off the true vertical, um, you still get a parallel machining surface to the bed, but you'll get uh, it. Depending on the diameter of the cutter you put in here, you see, especially when you use a fly cutter, 
which is over its uh, turns over a while larger diameter, if this is a bit on an angle, it will give you a bit of a concave shape. The cutter will cut more on one side than it does on the other side. You can, you can see it readily by the, by the type of uh, track that the, the cutting pattern that, that you get when you machine in a surface with a fly cutter. So uh, th that's perfectly acceptable, uh, and it takes quite a while to get this within a thou. The screws for adjusting the head, I, I'll show where they are, I'll bring the head back up again, and explain why this is, can be quite a tedious procedure that you don't want to go through too often. Bring this up as high, fairly high so you can get at it. We'll take this out again. light or similar light, it's very strong, you don't want to look into it, but you always need to see what you're doing, especially when you get into these dark corners. And you'll see up here, underneath it, in, in that you and you have to uh, try to throw this, there are four, four nuts here that hold this, that keep, that hold this in position. You see there's a, a, there's a, a degree indicator here. And there's actually a little bit of a dot, and near zero, but of course that's only a rough measurement. Uh, however, to adjust it, you have to loosen four of these nuts, uh, three smaller ones and one larger one in the center. Anyway, it's, it's it's really hard to get at, and um, then you have to move the head by very very minute increments and, and tighten it. The way I got it into uh, position is I snugged up the nuts without tightening too much. And then, fortunately, is a little bump here uh, by taking a, a brass rod and a hammer. I could move this, and you can actually read it on the dial indicator, so you don't go so that you can do it in, in fairly small, minute uh, amounts. Um, takes a little while. But you don't want to do that too often. So, so if you have to mill something at a, a 90 to a 45 degree angle, like at a V group, it's much better if you hold the part at the angle rather than move the head at an angle. Um, so that's one thing that um, uh, that you need to know about, and uh, probably have to do that once a year to set it up, depending on how much you use your machine and, and how wide you use it. So the, for the next episode, I hope to have this set up to, to how we machine this uh, V groove into this piece of uh, cold rod, rod and uh, so to support a circular or to support a, a round rod for the guide for the uh, scissor mechanism. That be all for this episode. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Please remember to leave this video a like. Hit that subscribe button and also don't forget to hit that bell for push notifications. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see and we'll see you next time. Bye!